And welcome back, everybody. Our next guest is a certified financial planner and the founder of Equipped Advisory. And she sits down with us today to speak about the work that she is doing to provide financial equity for members of the, the, bio, the biopic uh, and queer and LGBT community. So please welcome to the show, Kerry Cardin. Welcome, Kerry. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Lee. All right. We got the BIPOC community and an LG, LGBTQ. I, you know, I have, uh, it's always a tongue twister for me. I mean, a lot of things. So I have to, before I get on, I got to say Peter Piper picked the record for the peppers and, you know, <laughs> and all that stuff to get my mouth right. So how are you? What's it all about? Tell me more about what you're doing and how you put it together. Oh, thank you. Um, I, I am having a very, very blessed experience. So, um, you know, as a certified financial planner, I got the opportunity to learn about just money and the basics, but how our financial work. Uh -huh. And when I did that, I saw the that, that system was built for folks who already had wealth, especially when it comes to money and assets and social capital. And what I wanted to do was focus on the communities that were nearest and dearest to my heart, which are BIPOC folks, are Black, Indigenous, and people of color as well as um, queer folks within the LGBTQIA plus community and um, especially trans folks as well, folks who have been disenfranchised and not adequately served by financial services historically. So you said, you know what? I need to create something to help people that I'm close to. And you, you, uh, you came up with the Equip Advisory. That's right, that's right. So my firm specializes in not only financial planning, but also career coaching and business advising. And really a lot of this is just meeting people where um, I think most people think of doing financial advising or career coaching at a point where they've got what they need and now they wanna level up. So maybe you're making more money and you wanna be able to level up. But I really like to focus on clients who are, for example, working on making ends meet. They might not already be in that position. Uh, folks who might be some of the first in their family to make the kind of salary that they're making. And they're thinking about doing things like remittance, right? sending money back to members of their family in other countries, or even just supporting people who are here in this same country, but, you know, kicking them some extra money every time they make a little bit more. So really thinking about what does it look like to build that up over the countries. Hey, Carrie, how important is it for members of the BIPOC, queer, and trans communities to have access to financial planning resources. And what does it mean for you to be an intergenerational wealth uh, advocate or person on a mission for this? Yeah, it's essential, right? Financial planning is for everybody. We live in a system where everybody needs money. And then once you get to survival, everybody needs money to thrive. So every single person, their background, regardless of what they do or don't have, should have access to financial planning. Uh, but like I mentioned, that historically has not been targeted at and really specialized for in the BIPOC, queer, and trans communities. Intergenerational wealth architect, I will say, you know, that definition is likely going to evolve over time. But I really wanted to hone in on the fact that when I sit down with clients, when I do workshops, when I build courses even, I'm really focused on saying for folks, for where you are, we're thinking not one generation into the future, but multiple, right? How do we make it so that the types of things that you and I are struggling with look really different and hopefully positive for the generations that come behind us? And that's all about thinking in the now about how you create that wealth, not only through money and assets, but also through community. Right. Don't take what I'm using and just do it just for your own family. This is for everybody around you so that all of our communities get stronger as a result. Yeah. You know, so you're teaching people to help others get people 100%. involved. So you're saying Absolutely. don't just use it for yourself, but, you know, help other people get what they need so that you can, you know, we can be like a community of people moving together. That's what true wealth is. Yes. Right. Yes. Have abundance across all of the different areas in your life. Hold on, we're going to, the intergenerational wealth architect, you. <laughs> I hope to be one of many, right? I don't want to be by myself. This just happens to be something I'm really good at. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> no, you're good at it. And what does equity for LGBTQ community look like? Yeah. So 
um, in my place and where I want to work on it, that specifically looks like helping folks to navigate their careers so that they can build the kind of career that gives them joy and that allows them to grow in the ways uh-huh. that are important to them. It also means, you know, building work equity, right? So for folks who call themselves allies, really thinking about what am I doing in my workplace to make sure that all of the BIPOC, queer, and trans colleagues I have feel like a sense of belonging and feel a sense of community within yeah. our organization. And and when people come to you for help, what 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 kind of help are they looking for? Um, people come to me with a lot of anxiety. <laughs> I will say, you know, a lot of our meetings, they feel a little bit more like therapy sometimes than they do just, you know, going into spreadsheets. Yeah. So, you know, folks are worried, right? If we read the news right now, people are worried about their financial situation. Coming out of the pandemic and the stimulus drop, you know, a lot of supportive services are changing. So people are coming to me with concerns and worries, not only about the present, but how that's going to affect their future. Um, a lot of folks are also thinking about what's going to happen to their parents and the generation ahead of them that are now getting into retirement, thinking differently about what it means to have uh, Medicare and support for that longer span that we're at. So yeah. that's what a lot of folks are bringing to the doorstep, worries and concerns. And my job is really to help them come to an understanding of what are your strengths, right? What are the tools in your toolbox that you can use? How can you leverage your community to get to a place where hopefully that burden feels 5% lighter and where you can start to share that folks and use those resources to build wealth in the now and then build that up over time so that as a community, we can all be stronger. So you help them to take care of themselves so that they can begin to help take care of others with the generational wealth. And I see people walk out of there happy. I just They just showed a picture of somebody. They felt relieved. What, who, what was that? Who, was that somebody that you worked with? Look, oh, this she is looked joy, this is very joyful. Look, and it's not even Christmas yet. <laughs> that is definitely the sense that we're going for, right? I, I feel like I've uh-huh. completed if somebody walked walks out of the session a little bit lighter. Uh, But yeah, that's a critical piece, is really giving people mind. And a lot of times, peace of mind comes from having a professional sit down with you and say, this is what's going on. And then here's how we can work towards the future that you want, right? Getting you a plan, but more important, something that you feel capable of executing, right? If I give you a plan that is completely out of your ability to do, um, that doesn't make any sense. So I really want to put you in a position where you feel empowered be able to reach the goals that you're Well, it looks like you're doing the right thing. What can you tell us about your financial planning workshops? How often do you do them and uh, how can people get more involved? Yeah, I'm currently uh, working on a partnership with Robin Hood, the financial oh, services yeah. organization. All right. Yep. And the U.S. Black Chambers of Commerce. Uh-huh. I have the pleasure of doing workshops that I've, I've been doing all over the country. And they're, those are currently focused on retirement really thinking about retirement for folks who are running their businesses by themselves. We call those folks solopreneurs, uh, but business owners, gig workers, right? The way we work looks different. Not everybody works at a company for, you know, 25, 30 years and then retires. So now how do we think about retirement when you might have a 401k over here and then you might have some money that you put in a savings account over here and you might have some Bitcoin you bought a few years ago over here. And how do you start to set that up in a way that's really make sure that you're prepared for um, that future where you imagine you're you know, on vacation doing those hobbies? Well, it looks like you got the ball rolling. i tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, what's next for you? Do I see a book or something like um, maybe workshops that are bigger, like in hotels, seminars, like yeah. things of that nature? Yes. Definitely more workshops. Um, that's where I get my energy, and I, I love to do so. I'll be doing more workshops and uh, building more opportunities, more community, uh, especially where they are. That live and in-person has a little really different. Um, as my 11-year-old said, it gets different. Yeah. So uh, I'll be doing more of that. And then I also have um, some courses that I've been building. Because I want to make Whoa. sure that I have some yeah, that people can access from wherever they are. So I currently have financial foundations course and i also have a 
career course. And that one was really good for people who are maybe thinking about switching careers or they might even be thinking about trying to take that next step. So it's something you can do entirely on your own time. I've got videos, I've got guides that walk you through, and then I can also offer one-on-one -on -one sessions on top of that to help folks get through it. And then I think maybe there's a book come, coming somewhere down the line. Let me see. Uh... <laughs> I would love to. I would love to. As an avid reader, that's uh, that's on my bucket list. So, All right. Uh, We're looking would... forward to it. You, yeah. you said it live on TV. Here we go. <laughs> Uh, it's a commitment. You hold me to it, Dr. Uh, that's, we're going to hold you to it. Where can we go to find more information about you and everything that you're doing? Absolutely. So my website is the best way, equipadvisory.com. Um, I'm not big on social media, but I am on LinkedIn, so that's a good place to find me as well. And then I'm continuing to uh, grow this that I'm at, so I will have more uh, posted on my YouTube channel as well for yeah. folks um, little tidbits that they can okay. use to make it better. Hey, what's the name of that book? Uh, uh, oh, okay. Think about it. <laughs> Carrie. Carrie well, it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> where can we go for more information? Again, say it one more time. Of course. Equipadvisory.com. Uh -huh. Thank you so much. Carrie Carden, CFP.